Okay guys, today we're talking about the Ontario RTAC 2 and discussing whether this is a good Alaskan survival knife or if this is really the best Alaskan survival knife. So without any further ado guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more Alaskan content like this and let's jump right into it. Okay guys, just love the sound of that. <laughs> But let's talk about the RTAC 2 and what I think about this blade for an Alaskan survival knife. Now, this is not my first rodeo doing uh, Alaskan survival knife, you know, kind of talking about the Alaskan survival knife or the perfect Alaskan survival knife. And my viewpoint has kind of updated since the last time I made one of these videos, but not too much. So essentially, what I think about this blade from a survival standpoint is that it depends on how you approach your survival strategy. I think that there are two primary survival knife strategies out there, uh, especially when it relates to Alaska. And that is that number one, and probably my preferred strategy, is that you can carry a knife, usually probably a smaller knife, something like a condor pterosaur, like this little guy, and then you can balance this smaller knife with a saw, with a hatchet, with an axe, and you can balance it with those other ancillary tools that give the blade um, less functional capacity. So, you know, you can have a smaller blade, but you also don't need that blade to do as many different tasks. So this knife for me would be relegated strictly to, you know, feather sticks, striking my ferro rod, gutting or skinning or processing game animals and those general tasks, you know, or natural resources, things like mushrooms and uh, other things like that. That's what my, you know, smaller blade is going to do. That my saw and my hatchet are going to produce or help me obtain the wood that I'm going to use to build my shelters, to uh, keep my fires going and such stuff like that. So that's kind of strategy number one for picking an Alaskan or generally a survival knife. And in that strategy, you usually want to lean towards a smaller, lighter knife that doesn't have to be as robust or strong because it's going to be doing lighter duty tasks. Now, the second main strategy, and I'm sure that there are other strategies that you'll let me know, but uh, would be a one tool kind of option. Now, once again, that is not my favorite option, but in certain circumstances, you may not be able to carry the additional weight of additional tools, or you may not have the additional space to factor in all of those tools. So in that case, you want to step up to a larger knife. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a 16 inch RTAC 2. It could also be something a little bit smaller, such as the uh, Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. Now, this is probably a little bit more on the high end because of the price point, but something along this blade size, or sorry, this overall size, which I believe that the, uh, the Pacific is about a 10 inch blade. So you can see, or sorry, not blade, but 10 inch overall knife. So, you know, it has about a seven inch blade or sorry, it has about a seven inch blade and about a five inch handle. So you're talking about a 12 inch overall package here. And you can see, you know, this blade is 10 and a half inches. So you can see that nearly this whole blade or that nearly this whole knife is just encompassed in this blade. But something like this can also suffice for this strategy. But by and large, something like the RTAC 2 really begins to shine in its abilities to be an Alaskan survival knife and a general survival knife when it is all alone. So when you have have just one blade for your survival knife you have to factor in that you're going to be building shelters with it you're going to be getting your firewood with it you're going to be feather sticking starting your fire you're going to be processing your game animals you're going to be doing everything that you would do you know with three tools in one tool so that makes sense that you have to step up the ability or that tool has to be able to handle those different tasks with greater efficiency so with an RTAC 2 like this you're going to be able to drop trees you know about wrist thick you're going to be able to build shelters collect firewood but you can also feather stick it's going to be harder to do with this blade but it can be done and you know you can process game animals with this blade it's going to be harder but it can be done um, you know it's just it's not going to be as seamless or as easy as using a smaller knife with multiple tools 
So getting back to the original core of the conversation, I do think that the RTAC-2 is a pretty venerable survival knife, especially for Alaska, because it fits in with what I originally said, and I still largely agree with what I originally said, and that is that you want, if you're going with a one-tool option, you want something that can handle those larger tasks, especially uh, sheltercraft and firecraft, because like in most places around the world, uh, your two most important survival objectives, at least for the first 72 hours, which is when most search and rescue is going to be conducted, is being able to build a proper shelter and build a proper fire. One, you want to use that fire for potential signaling, but also two, that fire is going to keep you warm, and especially in the winter of Alaska, you know, it gets cold here, so you want to, you know, make sure that you can build it adequate fire that will be warm enough for you to live around and so that requires you being able to gather a great deal of firewood and I think the saying goes you know when it comes to firewood or ha keeping a fire overnight is you know gather as much firewood as you think you need and then double it and so you know you do have to get more wood than you think you do uh, to last overnight so that's what I have to say about the RTAC 2. You know, I think it is a great, very capable blade. It certainly, you know, can serve the purpose of a multi-role survival knife. And I think that that's ultimately what you need if you are going with strategy two. You know, if this is your one tool option, you're going to need something that can handle the larger tasks very well and very effectively. And I think that the RTAC 2 does that. And I think that uh, it also does pretty good on the smaller uh, on the smaller end of things. This blade, though I have recently got it, so I'm just still testing it out, but I have been fairly impressed with the abilities to, you know, feather stick with this knife and do some of those smaller kind of crafting tasks. So it can certainly do those tasks. Uh, certainly not as good as a smaller knife, but it does them and that's what counts. So that is the RTAC 2. Do I think it's the best survival knife for Alaska? It's a strong yes and no. It's the, a strong yes if this is your only tool or if you're running a one tool option, then yes. I think that this is probably one of the best options out there. But if you are running a multi-tool option, I would say absolutely not. Get something like a Condor Pterosaur. It's gonna be cheaper and more effective in the long run. So that is my opinion on the RTAC 2 for Alaskan survival. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.